Hello everybody and welcome back to our Community for Food cook-alongs. Um, it feels like it's been forever. I mean, I'm saying that for me, but I'm sure it doesn't feel like, I'm sure it doesn't feel like forever ago. Uh, I'm sure the summer holidays don't feel like they lasted forever. <laughs> but it feels like forever since I've been standing here in the kitchen doing a cook-along with you guys. So I'm very pleased to be back and excited about this week's recipe, which is bean burgers with wedges, an absolute favorite. My kind of thought with this one is was that it might still be barbecue weather, but mm, that's kind of iffy right now, isn't it? Um, but yes, it's an absolute pleasure to be back. Um, we're gonna be doing bean burgers with wedges tonight, and um, I can't wait. So I was gonna say um, usual drill, but I should maybe do a wee recap of that since it's been nearly, it's been six weeks, I think, since our last cook along. So what we're gonna do today is I will walk you through um, or I'll, I'll cook the bean burgers and wedges and walk you through what I'm doing as I go. I'll take it at a nice easy pace so you can cook along beside me in, at home with me um, or you can just watch and then cook it in your own time whenever you want to do that or just or just use me as a sort of visual guide. Um, so yes if you've got any questions at all as we're going whether you're cooking along with me today or whether you're watching it back and cooking it later then you can drop me a message on the number that's on the back of your recipe card that you've got from community for food um, which is 077-23341919 so at any point during the cook along live today or if you're watching it back at another time then feel free just to drop me a message ask any questions or advice or if the recipe is going a bit pear-shaped for you then just drop me a message and I'm more than happy to help and give you some advice even if it's like I don't have this can I substitute it with that or, or whatever the question is then don't be shy and um, chances are if you're asking the question somebody else is thinking it as well so please don't be shy and um, also we've drop me a message if I'm going too fast or too slow for you so I can sort of keep the pace at a tempo that suits you Right, I think that's the sort of admin-y stuff out the way. Um, before you do anything else, before I run through the ingredients, if you get your oven on at 200 degrees um, to preheat. Now don't worry, that's just for the wedges. So don't worry if you don't have an oven um, and you want to make it anyway because you can absolutely still make it, even the wedges. Um, the burgers don't need the oven at all. The wedges, I can show you an alternative way to make them. Um, so if you do want to make wedges, but you don't have an oven, again, just drop me a message and um, I'm very happy to show you how to do that. I can maybe talk through that later on in the live. Right. Now, if I run through the ingredients quickly, whilst you get a chance to get them together in the kitchen, um, hopefully you've got your little pack from Community for Foods. So they're all nicely bundled together anyway. Um, what you'll need is your tatties, some salt and some cooking oil for um, the wedges. Um, I've got new potatoes here, but if you've got sort of bigger potatoes then that's absolutely fine as well. I'm just using these because they were in my fridge and needed using, so I figured I would use them. But bigger ones are maybe slightly better if you want bigger wedges, but really you can use either. So whichever you've got is absolutely fine. And then for the burger, it's super simple ingredients. The best thing about this burger recipe is it's so cheap and easy to make. Well, cheap and healthy. It does take a bit of time to make. However, um, what I recommend or what I love to do is if I'm making them, I batch them up and make two or three quantities at the same time because then you can just pop them in the freezer and then you've just got homemade healthy burgers as easy as shop-bought ones. So it's an absolute winner in terms of get a bit healthier and also saving a bit of money, which we could all do with a bit of both probably most of the time. So for the, for the burgers, all you need is 200 grams of porridge oats, two large carrots, I've got three because mine are a bit small, and then two medium onions. And that's it, also some salt and some oil. If you've got any sort of seeds or spices or herbs, then feel free to bang them in as well because it just adds a bit of flavor, um, extra flavor to the burger, but absolutely, Fine with just this, you'll have a delicious burger at the end of it. Right, let's get going then, shall we? We're gonna start off by making the wedges. So I'm just gonna pop my burger ingredients to one side and then crack on with these wedges. So all we're gonna do is cut the tatties into wedge-like shapes. 
and pop them in a bowl. And that's how we're going to um, season them and get them nice and um, oily without sort of drowning them or you know, having all the salt or all the oil in one place, which tends to be the thing that gets me when I make wedges. So depending on the size of your tatties will depend on how you do this. What I'd recommend is you just sort of half them. So you've got a nice flat bit to sit the, sit the tatty on and then just in sort of diagonal um, direction, cut them into wedge shapes like that. So you see I've got quite small wedges there, but depending on your size of your tatties, they'll be a bit bigger. You want to make sure your wedges stay roughly the same size um, because if you make them hugely different sizes, then they won't cook. They'll cook at different speeds. So you can see mine are a little bit different there, but you want to sort of roughly keep the thickness um, not too crazily different, different. Okay. So whilst I'm doing this, I'll explain what you would do if you didn't have an oven. Um, so if you didn't have an oven, you would put a pan of water on to boil and then wash your tatties and just chuck them in whole, like don't cut them, chuck them in whole. And basically parboil them. So depending on the size of your tatties, um, depends how long that would be, but for tatties that's about this size, I'd say parboil for 10 minutes. So they're kind of, um, takes the edge off the hardness, but they're not kind of cooked through. And then sort of drain them and run them under some cold water, just so they're sort of um, handleable, if you like, just cool them off ever so slightly. And then what you would do is cut them into wedges, just like we're doing here. Because they'll still have a bit of a bite in them, in that they're, we've parboiled them, not boiled them all the way, you should still be able to cut them like this without too much problem. You might need to let them cool for a bit longer or run them under cold water for a bit longer to make them handle, handleable, if that's even a word. <laughs> but um, you're essentially just doing this exact same step here once you've parboiled them. And then rather than putting them in the oven, what you do is you shallow fry them. So get a frying pan, put um, about a centimeter of oil in the base of the frying pan, and then just fry the par-cooked wedges for about another sort of five to seven minutes till they're sort of cooked through. So slightly different, but you'll still basically get wedges at the end of it. So um, it's a, just a different way. It's a bit takes a bit more effort, I suppose, than just chopping them up and bunging them in the oven like we do here. But um, you get the end result the same, which is what you want. If anyone wants a bit more detail on that, if you don't have an oven and you're trying to make the wedges, then do just shout and I can give you a bit more of a kind of whistle stop of how you do that. Right, so then you've got your bowl of wedges and then into that we're going to put a teaspoon of salt. If you want to do any um, fancy herbs or spices or anything on this, then be my guest. What's beautiful actually is a little bit of paprika or chilli. Gives them a nice sort of spiciness. So if you've got that in the store cupboard, then feel free. And then two tablespoons of cooking oil. That can be any cooking oil you want. And then basically, just give them a bit of a shake around, a shimmy shimmy, to get them nice and coated in all that lovely salt and oil. And by doing it this way, rather than just drizzling it over the top, it means they're nicely coated, evenly coated, rather than sort of a couple of them being drenched in salt and the rest not. So there you have it. Now, um, sorry, just stood on my doggy's paw there. <laughs> now, if you just transfer them onto a baking tray, we'll shove them in the oven. To transfer them onto a tray, you want to make sure when you do that, that um, they are in one layer. You've not got them stacked on top of each other. Because if they're stacked on top of each other, rather than sort of um, baking and getting nice and crispy, they'll kind of 
just kind of steam and you won't get the same nice um, brown crispiness to them. So try and get them as single layer as you like, as you can even. There we go. So I'm going to pop them in the oven now. If I can't imagine your oven will have preheated, nor is mine because I just chucked mine on just before we started. Um, if you, have pre if you have preheated your oven, you're following my recipe card um, and you've had the foresight to preheat your oven, then these will only need about sort of 15 minutes. Whereas if you're putting them in when your oven isn't up to heat yet, and I'll be honest, I do that quite a lot with things because I think it saves a bit of energy and let's face it, we could all do with uh, paying a little bit less on the energy bills these days. Um, so I'm just gonna whack them in now before my oven's up to temperature and then they might take a bit longer, more like sort of 20 to 30 minutes depending on how quickly your oven heats up but just keep an eye on them um, and I'll remind you as we go as well I'm just going to pop them in now and then about kind of halfway through we'll give them a, a toss right so wedges in we are rocking now it's on to the burgers so these burgers so simple um, and um, so delicious. I just realized there, you probably noticed my eyes just flashed like with a moment of madness. I was like, I thought I was missing an ingredient in those burgers. Do, 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 do. The humble kidney bean, um, which is the first ingredient that we will need to use. <laughs> so get yourself a large bowl, like this one or whatever, um, and then you want to drain and rinse your kidney beans. I've already done that because I don't have a sink in my little corner here. But if you drain and rinse them, make sure you do give them quite a good rinse because quite a lot of sort of icky, starchy stuff that um, sort of sticks to the kidney beans. So make sure you do give them a nice rinse. Pop them in a large bowl. This bowl is going to be where we're mixing all the burger ingredients, so make sure it's big enough. And then using a potato masher, you can use a fork for this. It'll just take you a bit more... Um, effort <laughs> but with a tatty masher ideally then just give them a good mash so the beans are kind of like a mush rather than formed beans this will be the sort of binding ingredient of the burger essentially so you want to get it nice and kind of um, mashed there we go doesn't take long with a masher doesn't need to be perfect, but yeah, you just want them to be kind of nice and sticky. Because like I say, that's what's going to hold the burger together. There we go. That will do just fine. Okay, make sure we get all the good kidney beaniness out of there. Just going to get a wee thing made to get it out of all the um, bits of the masher, because that's the good stuff. That's what makes the, that's kind of the protein of the burger as well from the kidney beans. So that what makes it nice and filling. So you want to make sure we don't lose any of that goodness. Right. Um, now, we can just set that aside for one second. And we're going to look at um, frying up some of our onions, which is the next ingredient. So um, peel your onions. I've already done that because mine were dirty, picked from the garden onions, they're all dirty skinned. But if you peel them and then chop them in half like that, so you've got the nice flat side on the board, and then we're just going to dice them. Now I feel like I give you an onion dicing um, demo every single cook-along because it feels like there's always an uh, onion in the um, recipe, but there is. Onion's the base of so many good things. So once you've got cut your onion in half and you've got the flat side on the board, then make a bridge with your thumb and index finger. And then with the tip of your knife, run from the root of the onion all the way to the front like that. I'm doing this a bit awkward so you can try and see what I'm doing. But from just from the root there all the way to the front. And then you see you've got this sort of fanned wedges, if you like, of the onion, and then holding it together again with your bridge with your thumb and forefinger, then just slice that horizontally all the way down to 
to the root of the onion. When it gets to the end there, I always find it really tricky to handle, so I tend to flip it. Again, so the largest flat bit's on the board, because it's always easier to handle when the flat bit's on the board. And then there you have it, just chuck away the root. So if you do that for the rest of the halves, try and make it easy for you to see here. And you don't need to be precious about this. These are just being fried up and then added to the burger mix. So it doesn't matter about being the most beautiful little perfectly diced onion. But it's, I always think it's good practice because dicing onions is a life skill. <laughs> Do you know, I say that, but I didn't actually think that until I became until I sort of started New Norm and started cooking for a living. Prior to that, I just um, chopped onions any old way. So really, feel free to chop them any old way that works for you because it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. There we go. Also, if you don't have two onions, one onion will do just fine. It's not... It's not um, make or break, and those were quite big onions, so if you've got two small onions, that'll be absolutely fine as well. Right, what we're gonna do is, in your frying pan, put that onto a medium-high heat. I'll do it in this one, actually, so you can see a bit better. Medium-high heat, and then you just put a tablespoon of olive oil, uh, or cooking oil, whatever you've got, um, into the pan. And then pop your onions in, and we're just going to fry them off till they're nice and soft. OK. Just a medium high heat. And then, yeah, you just want them to soften off. If you've got some garlic, then Feel free to add some garlic in here at this point as well, because that always gives a lovely exit. Oh, I've added the root of an onion in there. Don't want that. Um, garlic always adds a lovely flavor with onions, so feel free to add that as you like. Right, um, next up, you want to peel and grate your carrots. Now, top and tail them. As I say, I've got three medium-sized ones rather than two large. Um, I said peel. You really don't have to peel them, actually, and I don't think I'm going to because there's so much nutrients in the peel. If you give them a good wash, and I know mine are a wee bit brown, um, but that's because they're nice, fresh ones, again, from... I've been getting this lovely veg box lately, and um, they're nice and fresh, so they were a wee bit dirty when I got them. But um, there is lots of nutrients and lots of flavour in the skin, so I'm actually not going to peel them, but that's completely your choice. If you want to peel yours, then obviously be my guest. Um, so we're going to grate them. And I'm just going to grate them onto a plate. Because what we want to do is, depending on how much excess um, liquid comes out of the carrots, because sometimes you can get quite a lot of juiciness out of a carrot, we may want to squeeze some of that off. So I'm just going to do it on a plate here so we can sort of capture that. Careful of your fingers, always, when grating. Graters look a bit uh, harmless, but actually, they can really get you, especially when you're on the end of a carrot. I recommend, rather than trying to grate that last bit, is eating it. This bit always goes in my mouth. Yum. And here my onions sizzling away there, so I'm just going to give them a little stir. You just want to saute them off so they're nice and soft. Mmm, that carrot's delicious. And then again, just grate in the rest of them. I tend to turn my carrot so I don't get that sort of floppy bit that you can't grate. It goes too thin. Or if you've got one of those fancy blenders with an attachment, then that grates carrots super quick, doesn't it? 
Although I always think it's not really worth the washing to get that out just for a few carrots. Okay. And then again, in the mouth to save any fingers getting damaged. Always get bits of carrot flying everywhere when you do this, don't you? Okay, there we go. I think that's good enough. Right, I'm just checking on these onions. Give them a stir so they're not sticking. They're looking good, smelling amazing. I love the smell of frying onions. Okay, they're looking good. Now, if you take the greater off. Make sure you get all the carrots from up in the inside of the grater there. You'll see these aren't too bad actually. Sometimes you'll have a real sort of puddle of juice underneath um, or you'll see the juice sort of coming out from underneath your pile of carrots. And if you do see that then what to do is just give it a good sort of squeeze. Not too hard but just give it a firm squeeze and then take the carrots and put that in your bowl and then discard the excess juice. But as you can see, ours aren't too bad here at all, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pop them all in. That's just to stop the burgers getting too soggy, basically. So if you do notice that there's a lot of excess juice in your carrots, then just squeeze it off before adding into the bowl. But these are looking pretty good. Right, so carrots in there. I'm just gonna clean as I go. Best practice. Never normally do that, just when I'm on camera. <laughs> um, and then to that, we're going to add our 200 grams of porridge oats. I'm just going to add half of that right now and hold half of it back just in case, because you kind of want to judge the um, consistency of the burger. So you don't want to make them too dry. We've still got our onions to add in. So they will also add a bit of moisture, but I'm just going to be a little bit cautious and add the oats half and half. All right, our onions are looking pretty good. Nice. Now we're gonna reuse this frying pan to cook the burgers, so uh, you want to be mindful that you don't uh, stick the onions to the pan, or if you do, you probably should wash the pan before going ahead and cooking the burgers, um, or it might make them trickier to um, manage. Let's see, I've got a little bit of stickiness there, but I think we'll be okay. And that's pretty much all you want. You, want them, you don't want them to be sort of fried so they're sort of crispy. You just want them to be sort of sauteed so they're nice and soft, like we have here. Okay, so I'm going to turn the heat off there, and then I'm going to add these to the bowl. Sorry, you can't see anything but the back of my... There we go. Beautiful. Just get every last drop out there, so we can reuse this pan. And then... Basically, just mix. Oh, we also want to add a pinch of salt. Just a pinch. You don't want to add a full teaspoon or anything because it'll just make them too salty, but just a pinch to taste. At this point, if you've got any um, mixed herbs or parsley or paprika or chili, then feel free to add that into the burgers at this point as well. Okay. And that's coming together lovely. Okay. So you can see here actually that already 
the burgers are looking not that moist. So I would be inclined to say I'm not going to add any more oats. So um, be cautious of that then um, with your recipe, guys, to hold back the oats till the end because I've only used, unless I've weighed that wrong, I've only used about half of the... Um, half of the oats, I've only used about 100 grams of the oats there. So just a note when you're doing this recipe that you probably don't need all that 200 grams of oats. So that's it. Um, I don't know if I've actually misweighed that. Now I'm looking at this recipe now thinking, I don't think this would ever take 200 grams of oats. But that's okay. We live and we learn. So now that's all mixed together, all we have to do now is basically shape them into four nice balls. And we're going to get our hands dirty to do that. So if you get the mixture sort of the bottom of the bowl there, what I tend to do is sort of pack it into the bottom of the bowl so it's sort of fairly even so you know what you've got. And then using a spoon or sort of slicey thing like this, actually quarter it because then you sort of know roughly speaking, that you've got even sized burgers. So quarter it like that and then stick your hand in, grab it and then shape it into a bowl. And that's packing together quite nicely like that. So you wouldn't want any more oats. Okay, I'm just gonna set these aside on the board whilst I do the same for the other four, three, can't count. And if you want, so these make quite thick burgers, but if you want them a bit smaller, like if you've got kids who aren't really that big eaters, then you can definitely make this make six burgers and they just make sort of slightly smaller, thinner burgers because these do make really fat ones. Notice right now I am um, making them into balls. We will flatten them and we are, we're not making burger balls, we are making burgers. But to begin with, to get the, sa the size right, I'm just shaping them into balls and compact them quite tightly when you're making the balls and that's kind of helps them stick together when you do flatten the wee bit. There you go. Not hugely equal in size but equal enough. Equal enough not to cause arguments hopefully. Go. It's quite therapeutic this actually. It's a bit like a stress ball. <laughs> Okay, we've got some leftovers here. So when you've got leftovers in the bowl like this, then just sort of add it to your smallest burger. Which one do you think is the smallest one? This one. So we'll pop that back in and use it to gather up those stragglers and add that. There we go. The other thing you can do with these burgers, if you find that you have, um, that your mixture is a bit dry, or you've actually added all the oats before hearing me say this, that you didn't need them all, you could add, you could add an egg, beat an egg, and add that to the mixture, and that would um, help with the consistency if you've ended up too dry. And also, because egg's a good binder, so if it is that you're a wee bit dry and they're not holding together, then add an egg, um, a beaten egg. And then that will help with the consistency. Alternatively, add a wee splash of milk and that will also help the consistency. Right, before we shake these burgers, I can smell my wedges. So I'm just gonna dive into the oven and see how they're doing. Side. Oh yeah, they are looking good. Look at that. So what to do there is just, yeah, I'm just gonna pop them here. And you just want to get your spatula, fish slice, whatever you call it. I never know what you call these things. Um, and just gently slide them under so they are not, you want them to, the danger is that they stick to the bottom like this one is here. Um, so you just want to slide it under to avoid that as much as possible. Some of them will, like we have here, but that's okay. And then just want to sort of agitate them a bit, basically, so they don't 
get brown on both sides. I don't know if I'm going to blame my fish slice here. There we go. There we go. Okay. Don't worry if they're not perfect because they still taste good. There we go. And just sort of work your way around the baking dish. You don't want them in a pile in the middle like that, that's fine. Then you just want to make sure that you get them back to a single layer at the end so you don't end up with just a pile of mashed tatty in the middle. So there you go. That's fine. And actually, when some of them go a little bit mushy like that, they actually tend to crisp up really quite nice in the end. So it's not the end of the world by any means. So stick them back in. These ones, because they're quite small, probably only need another five minutes now. So I'm just going to pop them back in, but I'm going to put a timer on so we keep an eye on them. Put for five minutes. And now back to the burgers. OK. So in your frying pan, you're going to put a couple tablespoons of, I'm actually going to change my frying pan just because I'm worried these are going to stick because I've used that one. So either wash your frying pan or if you have another, then get a fresh one. But um, it should be all right, but I'm just a bit nervous because I'm doing it live. Then I'm going to make my burger stick and you're going to be like, oh. What a rubbish recipe. Um, but no, get, wash your frying pan or get a new one and then put two tablespoons of oil on the bottom. You want a decent amount of oil on the bottom to make sure they don't stick. There we go. That should be fine. And then again, a medium low heat this time because we want to cook these quite slowly because they are quite thick. So just get that oil all the way around the bottom of the pan. I'm just going to put a little dash more just to make sure it's fully coated, depending on the size of your pan, how much you need. But you just want a good coating of oil on the bottom like that. And bring that to a medium heat. And then back to your burgers. We've got them in nice bowls. So now what we're going to do is just kind of flatten them. <laughs> so press them between your hands like that. You notice the edge sort of breaks like that. So just kind of keep molding it round and flattening it down till you've got a nice kind of patty shape. Now, like I say, these are quite thick. So you, do, you want them to stay quite thick because if you try and go too thin with them, then they will sort of just start to fall apart. But you've got them quite thick like that. Um, like so. So if that burger looks too big for someone in your family, then you know, reallocate and you can make more, more burgers, but smaller. But I quite like a big burger. Here we go. I'm just gonna do that to them all before we add them. Because you want, when you add it to the pan, you want to hear a wee sizzle. There we go. Perfect. It does take a wee bit of a, uh, Gentle love making these the right sort of size and shape. And just kind of a bit, quite a lot of pressure, I suppose, to make sure they stick together. But that is how it should be. If they're too loose, then they get sort of claggy in the middle, if you know what I mean, when you cook them. So it is quite a balance. Okay, four lovely shaped burgers. There we go. I should have said, by the way, if you don't have kidney beans, you can use any bean for this. So black beans, kidney beans, uh, cannellini beans, anything like that. Right, so now we just pop them in the frying pan. One, two, nicely evenly spaced. So you've got room to get a slice underneath it too. Flip them, and that's the kind of sizzle you want. You don't want them to be like super sizzly. 
because then you'll burn the bottom before they're sort of cooked through. So that's perfect, just how they are right now, a gentle sort of sizzle as they cook. Right, I'm going to clear the deck and then we're nearly ready to serve. So in terms of how you want to serve your burgers, it's entirely up to you. Um, I, these, because they're quite hearty burgers, you know, there's quite a lot in them and they're quite big. They are quite nice to serve with wedges and salad um, and a wee bit of mayo or coleslaw or something or whatever you've got. So that's the way I normally serve them. Um, but it's completely up to you. If you want to put them in a bun with some lettuce and salad, then that would be delish as well. So it's completely up to you and your burger eating preferences. Or maybe you're going to save the recipe for a nice sunny day and have them on the barbecue, which would be delightful. I'd probably recommend if you are doing them for the barbecue, give them a wee cook like this first because then they're, you know, things stick on barbecues, don't they? <laughs> so I'd say it's probably better off to give them a wee cook on the, um, in a pan before you take them out to the barbecue. But all good. Right, so whilst they're doing their thing, I'm going to check on these wedges again. Which are looking good. Yeah, they're looking pretty good. Just going to do a wee taste test with these, I think. Check they're cooked through. I'm going to get a big one. And all I do really, because it'll be hotter than the sun to put in your mouth right now, just take the slice and do that. And if it goes through easily, then they're cooked, which that did. So we're cooked with these. I'm just going to, whilst they're still hot, kind of release them from the bottom of the tray. And then set them aside to serve once our burgers are ready. There we go. So for the burgers, you could also add, there's lots of stuff you could add to them. So that's a really simple recipe just with carrots, oats, and onions. But you could also add like sweet corn or peas. You know, there's so much stuff that you could sort of add into them, which would just give a little bit of extra color and flavor and lots of stuff. So um, lots of options there to make them delicious. All right, I'm just gonna get my plate here. I'm gonna prepare a wee bun. Mm. Delicious wedge, sorry. I couldn't resist but pop that in my mouth. I'm gonna get a wee bun to put the burger in. Um, I don't have any salad or anything with me right now, but if you want to put some salad or sauce in it as well, then that's always spices up a wee burger, doesn't it? They're also a very good burger shape size. There you've got them. Pop that there. Might pop some wedges on. There we go. And then, so basically, with the burger, you want kind of about at least sort of five minutes each side. So you do want to keep it on a fairly low temperature so it's not burnt through. I meant to put my timer on when I put these on, but I didn't. So I'm going to guesstimate that they need a little bit longer. What can be quite good is to sort of give them a bit of a shuffle whilst they're cooking to make sure that they don't stick to the bottom. I guess that's the, that's the name of the game with this recipe is don't let anything stick, which these are not, which is brilliant. Less successful with the wedges, but still getting there. So I do hope you enjoy this one, guys. Like I say, I, um, when I make these burgers, because you can see that they are a wee bit of a faff in terms of, you know, you've got to grate the carrots and fry the onions and then mold all the burgers with your hands. Um, what I tend to do is batch up the recipe. So I'll do like two or three um, quantities in a go um, and then eat whatever you want that night and then you can freeze the rest. So just when you freeze them, make sure you don't pile them on top of each other because then they'll stick together in a lump and be really hard to separate when you defrost them. But if you lie them flat on a, in a sort of large box or on a tray and cover them with some cling film or something, um, then they're brilliant. And then you can just take one out at a time 
pop it in the, you can refry it like this or pop it in the oven to reheat it. Um, and then it's, it's super, super easy. Super easy, easier, as easy even as a shop up burger, but so much healthier. And given that there's really basically just an onion, a carrot, and some oats in this, it's a lot cheaper as well. So it really is a winner. Maybe go. Right, should we try and flip one? See what we're at. Just gently get underneath it and then gently give it a flip there. Beautiful. Nice and brown there. That one's held together pretty well. Let's see. There we go. Nice. Got a little bit of breakage, but we're not doing too bad. There we go. Oh, that was a good one. Held together beautifully. If you do get a bit of breakage, then that stuff will burn in the bottom of the pan. So you're probably better to kind of scoop it out rather than let it burn. So you see we've got these sort of little bits. I'm just going to scoop them out. I should have said as well, actually, when you're making the mixture of these burgers, um, as in before you shape them into burgers, that's a really good time to taste test and adjust the seasoning. So if you want to add some more salt or some herbs or some spices, then that's a really good time to sort of taste and do that um, before you shape them into burgers, obviously. But this is a tried and tested recipe for me. So um, I know they don't need too much salt, but I do quite often put some herbs and some spices in there as well, which is a nice added touch. So we're just going to give them another sort of five minutes on this side. Again, just keep kind of moving them around to make sure they don't stick. And what you can sometimes do is kind of, if they have lost a little bit or, or misshapen a bit, you can kind of push them on the edge of the frying pan to sort of try and get their shape back. But being a bit precious there because it doesn't really matter too much, does it? So long as they are intact, then the shape doesn't matter too much. So there we have it. Burgers and chips. What more do you want on a Saturday night? Um, yeah, I really do, do hope... I'm going to turn the oven off now because that's they're done. Um, I do hope you enjoy it because it is a, one of my favourite recipes. We used to, um, when New Norm um, was a food delivery um, business, when we were still doing that, which was pre-COVID, um, this was one of our favourite recipes, was the bean burger. So, um, yeah, it's tried and tested by many, many people, so I hope you enjoy. Um, what is really lovely to make with it as well is a wee salsa. So if you've got some tomatoes, and if you've got some tomatoes that are on the turn, because I know tomatoes quite often don't really last that long, do they? Or they go a bit sort of, um, you know, fluffy, that aren't that nice to eat in a salad. If you've got some tomatoes like that, then chop them up, dice them up, and... Um, Add a bit of kind of either lime or lemon juice if you've got some, or chop up some herbs um, and pop them in as well. And then you've got a nice wee salsa that would serve really nicely with this burger as well. Or just plain old tomato ketchup, which works a treat too. <laughs> um, personally, I'm more of a mayo girl, I think, than, than ketchup, but whichever floats your boat. Um, right. I think we're pretty much there. I'm going to take this one out. I'm going to pop it over, see what it looks like on the other side. Nicely done. Perfectly fits the burger bun there. And there we have it. Burger and wedges. All you need is a wee side salad, and then you've got the perfect dinner. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, top tip, if you skip to the bottom and don't watch the whole thing, is... Careful with adding the oats, only add half of the oats, otherwise they'll be a bit dry. Um, but otherwise, um, it's a stonker of a recipe, so I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you have a nice dinner. All right, see you next time. Bye.